Curly cuts do not work. Stop hair typing. Can we stop co-washing? Protective styles don't protect sh Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time here. I'm Jaisha. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you my unaxed for unpopular opinions on natural hair. So we are gonna chat while I get ready and do my makeup. I already started my brows because I just need to focus when I'm doing my brows, um, but I didn't finish them. But we'll start with primer. So like I said, nobody asks, but I'm just here giving my opinions. That doesn't mean you have to do as I am saying or think the same that I am thinking. I'm just giving opinions. I wanna put my hair back, one second. This makes things a little bit easier. Number one, we getting straight to it. Stop hair typing. It is 2024, can we please be done with hair typing? And when I say hair typing, I'm talking about that uh, type three, type four, three C through 4B A, like enough. Like hair typing is simply a way of describing what your curls look like. It does not give you any indication on how to care for your hair, what products work for your hair, what techniques work for your hair. It is literally just a description of your curls. And I don't know what the original purpose of the hair typing system was, but I feel like it's gotten very far from whatever that original purpose was. Like, I understand, you know, looking online and trying to find people with hair that looks like yours to be like, oh, you know, what's she doing with her hair? Maybe it'll work for mine. And, you know, sometimes that's the case and sometimes it's not just because someone's hair looks like yours. I feel like hair typing has become more of like putting us into a box and just like categorizing because it feels more like it's weaponized more than anything of like stylists saying I'm not doing type 4 hair or you have to pay more if you have type 4 hair or you know looser patterns of type 2 and type 3 being glamorized as being good hair or better hair and type 4 hair being criticized as like not being good hair or as hair that doesn't grow when we should really all be loving our hair however it grows from our scalp. It just feels like it's used in a way that's wrong. And again, it really doesn't serve a purpose because it's, it's just a description of how your hair looks. It's, there are so many factors to how your hair comes out, like your results and what products work for you and what techniques work for you that don't really have anything to do with your type. More important things would be your hair's porosity, the density of your hair, do you have fine strands, do you have thick strands? All of those things matter way more than your hair type, which is why sometimes you might see somebody that has hair that looks just like yours and you might do the same exact thing that you saw them doing to their hair, but but it might not look like their hair looks or you might not like that product. Not to say that you can't categorize or you can't, you know, describe your hair or someone else's hair as 3B or type 4 or whatever you want to say, but I would just say like it should be taken with a grain of salt. I wouldn't put too much stock in it. Next unpopular opinion. I said this in my, I think I said this in my last video. I don't use butters and oils in my hair. And that's probably not a big shock. I know there was a thing not too long ago with people canceling butters and oils. And it's, it's just never been something that was a part of my routine personally. Like I've never been big on doing butters and oils, especially butters. Butters are just so thick, like, like I know it's probably good for sealing in moisture, but I don't know, it's just too thick for me. I don't want it sitting on top of my hair and I don't want it weighing my hair down. 
and it doesn't provide any definition so for me I just I, I've never seen the purpose in them and I mean I don't know if I'm missing out I just don't really see the point in it um, I, I don't want something that heavy on my hair if it works for you it works for you I'm not saying that it doesn't work and I'm not saying that it's not good um, I can't speak for it because I've never used it I'm just saying I'm good without it number three Food does not belong in our hair. When I say food, I'm talking about these DIY masks where people are putting like avocado and eggs and maybe honey into these masks and putting it on their hair. And the truth is like those things may be beneficial, but using it in its raw form is not going to penetrate your hair strands. Food proteins are way too big to ever get into the strands of your hair. They are meant to be digested by your stomach. Like cracking an egg or putting mayo or avocado or honey into a mask and letting it sit on your hair, it's, it's not doing what you think it's doing. It would just be better to get a product that has those things in it. If it has avocado oil or if it has honey in it, those things that would be the best way because it is formulated in a lab in a way that can actually penetrate your hair strands and give you the benefit of that product but just putting a raw egg on top of your hair and letting it sit i'm sorry no 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 okay next number four can we please stop co-washing hear me out okay the original definition of co-washing, co-washing stands for conditioner washing. So it's washing your hair with conditioner only, not shampoo. And the purpose of this was to avoid using sulfates and shampoo and having them strip your hair of its natural moisture. You know, sulfates you don't want to use on a regular basis because it can strip your hair. Conditioner does not cleanse your hair. You cannot only use conditioner. Like, if you want to switch back and forth, co-wash one week, shampoo the next week, cool. But if you are only co-washing, you need to go buy some shampoo. Now, co-washing has absolutely evolved with the evolution of the natural hair movement and more brands making products for our kind of hair so people used to literally just be slapping conditioner on their hair and that's it now there are actual products um a lot of brands caught on to this movement so they started making products that are like co-washing products specifically for that and you know now they lather up they might give you a gentle cleanse we have more options now <laughs> is what i'm trying to say so just get a shampoo that does not have a sulfate in it a moisturizing shampoo if you're worried about stripping your hair and use that i don't see the need for co-washing and i don't think it is safe to only use conditioner in your hair if you do, please switch it up and use a shampoo. My next opinion should be no surprise to anybody. All gels should be stronghold. <laughs> because what am I what am I buying you for otherwise? What is the purpose of a soft hold gel? Why? Like the reason I buy gel is for definition and hold. If I want soft hold, I'll just use a cream. Which, I don't use creams because they don't give any hold or definition. So, what, what, is, what do we have soft hold gels for? Make them all strong hold. And extra strong. Alright, I think I'm on number six. I've said this before, but I want to say it again. Do not overnight deep condition. Do not all day deep condition. You should not be deep conditioning your hair for more than maybe an hour tops where did the phenomenon of overnight deep conditioning come from where who started that like where did it come from you know what i'm not even gonna od because i've done it before and i know it just seems like when you're trying to get the most moisture into your hair leaving a product on leaving a moisturizing product on for as long as possible seems like you would get the most benefit out of it the truth is you're doing more harm than good actually i've seen people 
like put their condition their deep conditioner in and tie their hair up in a plastic bag and a hat and all types of stuff all types of layers to cover it up go to the gym go do work an eight hour shift <laughs> a 12 hour shift with their deep conditioner in you have a dark moist environment which is a breeding ground for mold and bacteria to grow on your scalp it's just not healthy scalp care the minute i realized that i stopped because we gotta follow the instructions on these products y'all they're formulated and they're tested to be used in a specific way and it tells you that on the back of the jar so now i just stick to like a 20 30 minute deep conditioning routine and it's still working well while we're on the topic of conditioning do you know that you don't need to condition and deep condition your hair you don't need to do both <laughs> one or the other is fine <laughs> Conditioner is, you know, moisture, but it's more so gonna provide short-term moisture where a deep conditioner, um, as the name implies, is a little bit deeper. <laughs> so you get uh, more of a long-term, you get more long-term moisture. So, I mean, putting a conditioner on your hair, a regular conditioner on your hair, and letting it sit or adding heat is not going to magically turn it into a deep conditioner. If you're putting on a conditioner and then a deep conditioner on top, completely pointless, one or the other. Now for this next one, I feel like you're either on one side or the other, but curly cuts do not work. At least for me, they don't. <laughs> so once I big chopped, I was on a no heat journey for a good while because I was so traumatized from the heat damage that I had that I just I didn't want to put any type of heat on my hair you know when your hair just like you feel like you have split ends it's not cooperating you can feel it when you do your hair you can see it when you do your hair in your results like that's what I was going through and I was like let me go get my ends trimmed I went to a curly hair salon where they don't have any blow dryers or flat irons and I got my hair cut, trimmed, I guess a trim. Because my purpose was really just to get off all of my split ends. And so I got a curly cut. But after that cut, I still noticed my hair was not behaving properly. And it still felt like I had split ends. And so that's how I knew that curly cuts didn't work for me. And after a few months, I went to get a silk press. This was my first silk press since my big chop. It was some years later. After that silk press and trim, like I could immediately tell the difference. Like my hair was lighter, it was cooperating. I immediately knew like all the split ends were gone. I could tell the difference right away. And I even asked the stylist while I was there, like, what do you think is the best option as far as a curly cut or straightening my hair to get it trimmed? And she was like, you know, curly cuts could work for some people, but for our hair type, you have to straighten it in order to see where the split ends are, where the dead ends are, and like exactly where you need to cut off and how much you need to cut off. So from then on, I, whenever I get a silk press, I just do my little trim. That's just me. They don't work for me. The next one, this is probably going to sound a little crazy. <laughs> Protective styles don't protect shit. Now for real, I know protective style, like there are so many different protective styles. And I just feel like when I look back on a lot of times that I've gotten, that I've gone to a salon to get a protective style, like that's been like box braids, um, Senegalese twists, um, faux locks, those type of things. I feel like it ends up being worse. I feel like I have less hair afterwards. Does that like, does anybody else feel like that? It feels like, first of all, when you're taking your hair down after like four or five weeks, you already know you're gonna get an insane amount of hair that comes with that wash day, comes with the takedown process. It's a lot of hair that you see. And then sometimes I think it's like good hair too because why does it look like I have less hair than before? Or like some type of scalp issue like Somebody pulled my hair like it was too tight. All of these things have the potential to damage your hair if it's not done 
correctly. That could be buns, ponytails, quick weaves, sew-ins, wigs, whatever it is. Too much or done incorrectly, it's not protecting your hair. You could lose your edges, you could have a bald spot. I think we need to stop calling it protective styles and just call it what it is. It's not protecting your hair, it's just giving you a break from doing your hair. Number 10, and we are almost done. Shrinkage is good. I know shrinkage gets a bad rep and we don't like shrinkage in our curls, but it's really a sign of healthy hair. And I know as much as we don't like our hair looking shorter than what it actually is and it looks deceptive and oh, shrinkage is the devil and all this stuff, it's really it's really a good thing. And it's a sign that your hair is healthy if it is shrinking, if it's shrinking back up. I don't work very hard to stretch my hair. As far as stretching, that's a preference. And I mean, if you do, that's fine. But we should dispel the notion that shrinkage is unwanted or it's a bad thing. That's what curls do, they bounce. If your curls are not shrinking, it's likely a sign that there's some type of damage. Heat damage, color damage, chemical damage, because then your styles aren't gonna hold. And then you can't do wash and goes. All right, face done, and I'm here to give you my last unpopular opinion. Wash and goes are superior to any other style. Y'all can have the twist outs and the braid outs and the flexi rod sets and whatever else. I'm gonna pick a wash and go every time. Some people think that your hair can't grow if you only do wash and goes, but I am proof of the opposite because <laughs> that's all I do. I'm always be a wash and go queen. All right, guys, thanks for getting ready with me. Thanks for listening to my unaxed for unpopular opinions on natural hair let me know in the comment section which ones you agree with and which ones you don't agree with because again these are just opinions you ain't gotta like them hit the thumbs up button if you liked this video and if you would like to see more don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you in my next one bye